All right, well, let's take a look at some tips, ideas, uh, thoughts for you, if you will, on this case study. So let's take a look at the first question. And that's, I think the, that is the question that's freaking everybody out the most. And this, this case, when you look at the case here, there's a lot of information given to you kind of within the narrative. So how I would approach this is I, I would have um, a piece of paper. And as I'm reading through it or making notes, I'm looking at what are the cash outflows and the cash inflows. And I'm doing the best to try to capture what those are. There is a ton of information in here. So again, I don't expect you to capture everything. But here is a kind of a quick list that I just typed out of some ideas of things that I'm I'm looking at as, as cash outflows. And I'm also looking at what are the expectations of the investors and what, you know, what are the... the um, you know, what are the uh, I guess anticipated cash outflows? There is some information in the case about projections, about um, you know numbers of procedures. So I'm writing all that down. So so basically, what because I, I want to do is I want to be able to to get capture what I think are essential cash inflows and outflows, and then I'm going to do stuff with them to answer some of these questions. And that's what I'm going to look for. Did you did you try to capture those cash inflows and outflows to answer uh, some of these some of these questions? And did it make sense uh, in what in what you did? So here are some things that I, I wrote down, just as some things that I as I was kind of going through there and i i'm not saying this is a complete list okay so there might be more might be less that would be okay too but just some of the things that caught caught my mind as, I, as i'm reading through here so you know what is the initial cost of the land um i'm just looking at on here too i think i've missed one salvage value i think was mentioned in the case you know i'm going to try to capture write that down um the number of procedures per day you know, what is that? Is it going to be a cash inflow or outflow? That's going to probably going to be a, a an assumed cash inflow. Um, utility, labor costs. I know there's a lot of labor information, but I'm going to try to summarize that and, and at least capture what I think labor costs are, supplies, et cetera. Maybe if I want to get fancy, I'm going to look at taxes. I think we have some tax information that I saw in there, you know, that might uh, be anticipated. So I'm going to try to capture some of that information. So I'm going to be writing all, you know, all that down. I might have, you know, 10, 15 items down. Um, I might have uh, three or four um, things that I'm capturing on cash inflows. Maybe, maybe four might be generous. Maybe, uh, I don't know, two to three cash inflows that I might be getting on a projected, you know, year one through three, four, five, six, seven, that kind of thing. So cash outflows same thing you know kind of trying to capturing that as we've been doing all throughout the course these inflows and outflows so that's what i'm doing that's my suggestion as you go through the case again don't like to try to get everything some of it you're going to go i have no idea how to apply um you know a certain uh fact that's in here so i guess don't don't go absolutely nuts as i'm looking through here seeing if there's something that's really pretty obscure but there's going to be things that you should definitely catch. I mean, you know, you should be able to catch or try to capture what the labor costs are going to be. Um, the number of procedures per day. I mean, those are things that should jump jump out, out at you. There's some other ones that are much more harder to quantify, um, you know, such as like the lost business, um, you know, from opening a new unit to this, uh, pro this uh, proposal. So, you know, that's a little bit more finesse. I, you know, that part you could probably not worry. But the things that you should be able to, you know, common sense things that you're reading through here, um, you're going to want to capture that. So there's there's some ideas for you. Feel free if you want, pause the page, pause the video, scribble those down if you like. Okay? So that's uh, kind of one thing. So then what are we going to do? Well, the first thing is we're asking for is what is net present value? You guys know how to do that. That's easy, right? You've got the great calculator out there, the one that we used a couple lectures ago. Um, I believe it's at calculatorstuff.com. Uh, it handles 
remember it was able to handle as many cash inflows and outflows as you want you can just keep adding 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 um so it's really great for that um so let's say for example if you have a year one or i don't know better year three whatever you pick a year three and you got a you know, you got an expense of X amount and a, and a projected revenue of X amount that happened within the same year. You can just do simple subtraction addition for that one and then put that in the cash uh, inflow uh, or in the in the cash flow, I should say, area. You might have a negative for some years, but you can, you can be able to calculate that and then be able to calculate that net present value with the net present value calculator. Don't use that earlier calculator that we inter I introduced you with. That was kind of to get you warmed up with the basics of time value of money. You want to use uh, my suggestion. I mean, you could, a little bit harder, but I would use the net present value calculator that we used. Uh, I don't know. I think it was maybe module four, uh, but go back to that lecture. The next thing is internal rate of return. That one's going to be, uh, you know, a little bit more complicated, but we did have a, a lecture on internal rate of return. So go back and look at that, see how we calculated that. Um, we do have, again, we have a calculator for uh, IRR. You're gonna wanna use, use that calculator. So, and remember what the principles of, kind of internal rate of return are, go back and revisit those, all right? So a lot of this information that you're capturing like i told you initially when i started talking you know writing all that stuff down you're going to kind of repurpose that same information um the next one with the um and that's why i say you know use a table i again i would use a table i think it makes it easier you know plus it shows me what uh going back to kind of this easy to make that into a table okay uh so kind of make your table and then you can show um illustrate you know kind of what you use as various cash flows for for these or how you calculated internal uh internal rate of return um for the the, the modified uh internal rate of return that's a little trickier so we didn't have a, a lecture on that and i chose that kind of the challenge part of this uh, of this case study um, I'll give you some hints on that, and and if you look at at page um, in, in page uh, 543 is is really you know we've got only one page uh, that talks about that that modified um, internal rate of return. Read the bullet points in there. That is the trick for that. Okay. You, you're going to have these cash flows that I've just described that we've been talking about for the past couple of minutes. You're going to have those written down. The, the, the trick with the modified, um, and this is all I would really be looking for. Did you actually read this? Okay. And did you apply the bullet points that are on page uh, 543? Because it tells you how to do it. So what, you, uh, what you're going to make sure that what kind of what I'm looking for that modified is um, you're going to you with your um, with the cash inflows the good well the good guys the cash uh, inflows okay those are all going to be brought to a future value number so you're going to check off all the ones that are in that are the good guys the inflows and you're going to future value those to what they call the terminal value. Okay, it's kind of a fancy word, but you're just going to bring it bring it all the way to the end. Okay, so if it's, you know, whatever year it was, I forget what year, but let's say it's, I'm making this up, but year five. So you're going to bring everything for the inflows. You're going to future value all of those to year five. That one you can use, um, pick your calculator of choice to, to bring all those individual flows to the end of this time period. And then you just simply add them all together. That's that that shouldn't be a problem. The outflows, and this is a particular. This is only unique with this with the modified um, internal rate of return. With the cash outflows, or yeah, the, the bad guys, the the costs, you're going to bring those back to present value or PB PV. Okay, so you're going to bring those back to time zero. So you're 
you know how to you know how to move cash flows we've been doing that you know how to take a cash flow you know how to bring it to the future you know how to take a cash flow and bring it to back to the zero point in time so you know how to do that with the good guys the inflows you're going to bring those to the future value whatever you deem as the terminal year again i'll pick year five let's say it's year five um you're going to terminal value all of those the good guys to that number okay the cash outflows the bad guys the cost you're going to bring back to present value so then at the end you're going to have two numbers the bad guy the negatives right will be in the uh present value the zero all of the good guys that you've had throughout the years will be brought to the future value so you have a a positive number in the future value you're going to have a negative number in the present value the modified internal rate of return okay is what is the discount rate that brings this back the the good guys the future value that brings it back and makes it zero so um a little bit more sophisticated uh if you even got close to a percentage i would be extremely impressed but what i would like to see is at least you've kind of set up that problem in that way you've made an attempt and you have a number okay <laughs> that's in there and the hint is that it's going to be generally it should be lower the modified will be lower than the internal rate of return so um so play with that again look at that chapter 14 just you can li literally uh it's um oh it's not too bad i mean it's maybe a maybe a, a page and a half of information that talks about um the modified internal rate of return but i really like the example right here that it gives because that really kind of tells you uh what you're doing the only problem with this particular example in the book is that it didn't it doesn't have um, any negative cash outflows, um, and maybe you just maybe you deem there is no negative cash outflows. Great, in any particular year, that's fine, that's cool. But if you do have any negative cash outflows, uh, they are brought back to the present present value. Okay, have I confused you completely? I probably have. But if you, as long as you're kind of trying to apply what I'm seeing here, shows me you've read this and you've tried to conceptualize it, you're going to be golden. Um, and net pre the net present value, again, looking at the questions and the internal rate of return, I, I do expect you, you should be pretty good with that. So um, that one should be, you guys You guys have, have that down and I've seen that evident through your work. It's just, yeah, we have a lot of numbers in this. Part of me is I'm not going to get so twisted up in the numbers. Whatever numbers that you've decided to extract for some of these basic items listed here um, or more, maybe you want to, you know, you find other things that I didn't find. Great. Um, but again, you're applying the principles of net present value and internal rate of return to that. Okay. So I hope that helps. Um, the rest of the questions, I think, uh, in general, in, in texting with students, like with two, you know, what are some of the qualitative um, factors? That's just more, have you read the case? Um, what else? What else is there about this thing that you might want to know? You know, um, what haven't we seen? That's just kind of you applying critical thinking to this case. Um, no, in other words, no math required. Yay. Uh, and uh, with uh, question three, considering all points, uh, you know, what, what's your final call? What's your judgment on this? Are you building it? Or are you not building it? Is it too risky? You know, um, you know, that's a, that's your call. Again, no right or no right or wrong answer, but why are you doing it? Let me know why are you doing it. Um, and you're going to have to, you know, what are the some of the maybe you've decided that there's way too many uh, qualitative factors um, that make this thing way too risky we don't have enough information to assess this particular project i don't know but you tell me what what it is why, why you're going to do it or not do it um and then in your opinion kind of what what are some of the things what what, what did what did you learn through this uh maybe you learned hey i hate finance <laughs> please don't put that but what made what did you learn you know maybe you learned that um you know geez cases can be complicated uh real life decisions on on whether you decide to um, 
you know, uh, take on a project uh, can be uh, very complicated and, um, and uh, you know, it's not easy. It's these things, uh, there's an illusion sometimes. And the illusion is that, um, you know, the science of, of math, of finance, of, of business decision making, or whatever you want to call it, can come up with perfect and clean answers. That's not always the case. I mean, sometimes it's a crapshoot. You know, sometimes you can say, you know, you've done all the planning in the world and the numbers say yes, and you build it and no one comes. So, you know, um, to, you know, tell me what you learned from this particular case. What did you think that was interesting? And it might be other things, you know, maybe it's the human resource aspect or legal aspects that you never considered about uh, a project. And um, so again, those are just some of my thoughts. What are your thoughts? That's what I want to know. So again, looking for, as I've said a million times, are you, are you putting in the work in this case? Are you applying critical thinking? Are you showing me that you're applying some of the principles that we've learned throughout this course. If you're doing that, you know you're doing a good grade. You're going to get a great, you know, great grade on it. You know, are you communicating it well, you know, with good grammar that I can understand what you're saying? Are you illustrating it well so I can see the work that you've done, you know, in, in calculating that present value or internal rate of return? So, and in some cases, that might be screenshots of the calculator. You know, you might want to do that, make a nice little screenshot, crop it in, make it nice and clean. And then you drop that, uh, you know, drop that in the case study. And that's that's what I would do. So, but you guys do whatever you want. You want to do Excel spreadsheets? I don't care. Again, make it, you, you know what good work is. You know, I know that all of you know what good work is. Um, and just keep doing what you're doing and you'll do uh, absolutely fine with this case. All right. So I hope that helps with tips for the case study. Again, you do, I am giving um, uh, an extension on that case study until Friday of module eight. So you've got that extra time in there if you feel that you need it. All right. Well, best of luck on the case. I know all of you will do really, really well.